It's lit, man. I'm, there's probably some people down there doing that shit too, right? You know, burritos ain't doing nothing down there, right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's some burritos, man. You don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm. The, the, um, burritos, the um, burritos live in Clay County for the most part. Maybe it's the Black and Brown Coalition, not. <laughs> nope. Right now at 6 o'clock, for the first time today, we saw Virgilio Aguilar Mendez in the St. John's County courtroom. The 18-year-old is facing a manslaughter charge. Investigators blame him for the death of Sheriff's Deputy Sergeant Michael Kunovich. Sergeant Kunovich died in May. The trouble began when he reported a suspicious person, Aguilar Mendez, standing outside a closed business in St. Augustine. Yes, and Kunovich collapsed following a struggle with Aguilar Mendez, who speaks little English. The sergeant later died at the hospital. Earlier this week, the medical examiner released a report which concluded that Kunovich died of natural causes of cardiac dysrhythmia. News for Jack's reporter Marilyn Parker was inside the courtroom in Maryland. The judge acknowledged that he was entitled Spanish. to... Yes, and the state agreed with that acknowledgement because he's not charged with a capital felony. Now, why it took them seven months of Aguilar Mendez sitting in jail for them to reach that agreement is unclear. But even if he were let out, there is an immigration hold on him. So he would be taken into federal custody, making it a challenge to face the charges in this case. The question to the court. Is Virgilio Aguilar Mendez competent to stand trial? The 18-year-old from Guatemala is accused of manslaughter and the death of St. John's County Sheriff Deputy Michael Kunovich. First competency hearing Friday, psychologists describe Aguilar Mendez's thinking as concrete. He didn't know the names of the legal charges, and I explained what the names were, and I explained uh, what they were. Most important than the names is that he couldn't understand that he was being accused of, of manslaughter and that he also might die. They say he has a sixth grade level education, tends to answer yes, no matter the question, gives inconsistent information, and has trouble retaining information. So th this is what's coming across the border? Yo, maybe that sister from Chicago is right, Chase. Yikes. Yo, if he gets a, he gets he gets the uh, resist arrest and the cop dies and he gets a bond. Yo, why is this guy even still in the country, man? Punch his ass out of the what? country tomorrow. Can they please just alive? say, is he retarded or not? That's the question. I want to know why he's alive still, personally. Because the cops are out here shooting POC. Well, he's never... Yeah. Um, you got to mute yourself, um, Stephanie. You, you, um, I can hear that shit. I don't know if y'all can. I can hear like it's like a the the I can hear myself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Batter the question gives inconsistent information bit. and has trouble retaining information. In addition, his primary language is called MAM, a dialect adopted from Spanish. Two defense uh, witnesses uh, believe yeah. Aguilar Mendez is intellectually yeah. disabled. The state's argument is shown in this report with transcripts from when Aguilar Mendez was questioned by detectives using a translator. Where do you think that argument stands? Because he was able to comprehend or respond with that detective efficiently through that long transcript. Well, we heard testimony today from two of the three experts and also representative from the Guatemalan Mayan uh, Center that there's cultural um, issues there. Um, that could be interrelated to his mental health issues where they seem to just agree and go along with everything um, because if they don't, it's a sign of disrespect. The state also questioned Aguilar Mendez's best effort to understand what's going on. That's horse shit, right, Wicked? Well, you, got, you guys agree with everything or it's disrespect if you don't agree with everything somebody said? Nah, that's bullshit. I mean, so, some people are... They won't matter for sure, but come on now. I mean, what are they trying to say? Because he's, and now to a he's story from I... like a, a, a village or something in the mountains or some shit? Is that what he was saying? Yeah, he speaks a dialect of Spanish. Yeah. He doesn't even speak the real. 
And now to a story I've been covering for months. Tomorrow will yes. be the first time we see yeah. Virgilio Aguilar Mendez in court. He's charged with manslaughter in the death of St. John's County Sergeant Deputy Michael Kunovich. It happened in May when Kunovich reported a suspicious person standing outside of a closed business. After a struggle with Aguilar Mendez, Kunovich collapsed and died at the hospital. We now know he died of natural causes from a cardiac dysrhythmia. Now, this case is moving forward with some of the most significant developments happening just this week, and it's not over yet. We want to take you step by step revisiting how we got here. May 19th, 2023. St. John's County Sheriff Sergeant Deputy Michael Kunovich approaches a man at a closed business next to a Super 8 hotel off State Road 16 in St. Augustine. At this point, we knew there was a struggle between Kunovich and the man. Following the struggle, Kunovich collapsed and died at the hospital. Virgilio Aguilar Mendez is charged with felony murder and resisting an officer with violence. And the struggle was on with Sergeant Michael Kunovich. On May 25th, Sheriff Robert Hardwick speaks publicly about what happened at a violence against police news conference. The next day, Sky 4 flew over the funeral service for Sergeant Kunovich. On June 8th, the autopsy is done, but we don't learn this until later on in the year. July 21st, the felony murder charge for Aguilar Mendez is reduced to aggravated manslaughter. On August 1st, his defense attorney ordered a psychological evaluation. By October 11th, the evaluation is done. On November 21st, his defense attorney files this motion for a hearing and to set a bond. In the filing, we learn Aguilar Mendez speaks very little English, is from Guatemala, was waiting on a court date for an immigration hearing, and was working at local farms in St. Augustine while staying at the Super 8 Hotel. The defense December 11th, Aguilar Mendez's family back in Guatemala retains a civil attorney. On December 15th, Damn. national media outlets start picking up the story. December 19th, News for Jax tries to speak with Sheriff Hardwick about the incident, but they decline to comment. The next day, the sheriff's office releases a 44-page incident report with several accounts from deputies who responded to the call, an interview with Aguilar Mendez, and the medical examiner's report. It says Deputy Kunovich's cause of death was cardiac dysrhythmia, the result of damaged arteries and high blood pressure, the manner of death was natural, and the contributing cause was physical exertion and possible emotional stress while apprehending a fleeing suspect. Now, Aguilar Mendez's civil attorney sent me this statement following the cause of death being released. It says in part, in light of these revelations, we implore the Office of the State Attorney for the 7th Judicial Circuit of Florida to drop all charges against Mr. Aguilar Mendez and that he be released from jail where he has been for the past seven months for a crime he did not commit. Now, tomorrow at 9 a.m., there will be a hearing for evidence and motion to set a bond. News for Jax will be in the courtroom. We'll bring you the latest both on air and online. At News what are your thoughts? There's no way he's four feet. You think he's four out? There's no way he's four feet. <laughs> nah. Man, he's a little teeny little guy, man. He's not dumb enough to not know how to use a cell phone. he got a whole cell phone in his hand. And he knows how yep. to pick strawberries. So, yep. He yeah, got but it he I don't think he, uh, you know, criminally tried to kill the cop. I think it was natural causes. I mean, he could, he was a but language he resisted, barrier. Well, he resisted. If, if resisting arrest is a felony and someone dies well, in the commission of the felony, I, I can't but, agree but, with that. But what if he couldn't understand the commands right. the police officer he, was giving him because knew, of the language? You know what, I'm talking about, there's did. no, come on, man. Yeah. If a police right. is coming up to you and trying to put you in handcuffs, you understand that, man. Come on. See, I hear but, that. But yeah. why? But why was he being put in handcuffs? What was he it doing? He was, it don't matter. It don't matter. You, yo, do you hear that? Yeah, somebody got some. That's, 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 Judy. That's, that's, me. Judy. that's not me. That's not me. I yeah, don't know. Was, I just. It was, it was I kind of feel like it was unfortunate the police officer died of natural causes. Yeah. Other than that, I don't yeah. think he'd be charged with murder. Is he being charged yeah. with the cops' that's murder? He's been here with uh, manslaughter for the for his death. Yeah, aggravated, aggravated. Yeah, aggravated no, manslaughter. I don't know. I think it's I, shitty luck that he died on him. Yeah, I think it is. Because I think it was a language barrier. But with that said, though, I mean, shit. I, look, he's dead now. It's on you. Fuck you. 
Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like I'm, not word, there. Man. I'm not there yet. I'm with the resisting, though. Definitely, he should be hit with the resisting. That cop probably should have, he should have ate one less cheeseburger. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And it's not only just about cheeseburgers and stuff like that. Like, doing a job like this, you have so many moments in it. And he did 17 years of it where you get into chases, you get into shootouts, your heart rate goes yeah. up. Yeah. And yeah. then it goes down. And then you might have another chase or a foot chase at in that same shift. Your heart rate goes up and down. It's like riding a roller coaster, you know, multiple times throughout the day for 17 right. years. Right. Yeah, so, so I mean, the reports that clog the arteries, though. That's why I was saying cheese. So, I, I understand so, that. But um, but it's not only just because of that. Yeah, we have some uh, a lot of officers have uh, um, une- unhealthy yeah. eating habits. I understand. But, the thing is, is that he's resisting arrest. If his ass was in Guatemala and those Guatemala officers pulled up on him, I bet he wouldn't resist. Mm. Yeah, you might have a point so, on that. So Uniform looks the same around this whole world. Yeah. So we think, yeah, yeah. So we think about the manslaughter. Do you think you think he should be here with the manslaughter? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, it, and especially if the prosecutor can bring forth the case and say, if it wasn't for him resisting, then. He went and had that heart attack that day. And I mean, they do it all the time for the criminals. They, they, they you know, like, for example, uh, that case with uh, the, the EMS workers where they gave the, the suspect ketamine and they said he died because they gave him too much ketamine. To you know what Man. I mean? Yo, yo, yeah. I look, it, it, if Strawberry goes to prison, this goofy goes to prison yeah. too. Fuck it. Man, listen, you, you guys are not sending up your best with you. Right now, the 10 o'clock news, the wrong way driver accused of killing this Creekside High School graduate will stay behind bars for now. It was the outcome that Trenton Stewart's family was hoping for during a hearing today. The 18-year-old Stetson University football player was killed seven months ago while he was back in town after his freshman year. Ariel Montagudo, who is now in a wheelchair, is charged with vehicular homicide. Police say he slammed his Mercedes head-on into Stewart's trailblazer on Old St. Augustine Road back in May. The arrest report said Montagudo was speeding. And News for Jack's reporter Ariel Ariel Schiller joins us now with what else Stewart's parents are saying about this hearing and, and really how they want to honor their son's memory. Yeah, you know, this is the first holiday season that the Trenton Stewart's family is spending without him, and it's understandably tough. But his parents say Montagudo's bond reduction being denied is a win for the community. It's about keeping our community safe, and that's what's most important and has been most important to me as a mom from the very beginning. Trenton Stewart's parents, Robert and Mandy, are thankful that Ariel Montagudo's bond reduction was denied Thursday afternoon. His bond is set at $750,000. His lawyer argued the bond was excessive, saying that there's no evidence to prove he can pay it. She argued that if there was a reasonable bond set, Montagudo would live in Jacksonville with his girlfriend and newborn daughter. I understand, Robert, that there's the interest in the community element, but Mr. Montagudo is confined to a wheelchair. Um, he and the that he cannot drive, and he has no intention. The state attorney's office argued this is a rare case because Montagudo is facing his second vehicular homicide charge. Montagudo received... Jesus Christ. Yo, yo, is this Jacksonville? Yes, this is Jacksonville, Yo, we three for three, Chief. What is this, Don Brito Hour? This Don Brito Hour. I'm sorry, Wiki, but uh, this feels good for a a change of pace. Yeah, exactly, man. Yo, yo, I'm, I'm gonna keep an eye on Jacksonville because we got Albuquerque and maybe Jacksonville. I don't know. Yeah, man. Hey, um, make sure you hit the like button. We're trying to get 300 likes before the show's over, man. Um, damn, second vehicular man slow the fuck. And he has some attention to drive. The state attorney's office argued this is a rare case because Montagudo is facing his second vehicular homicide charge. Montagudo received the first charge in Broward County. He spent 10 years in prison for hitting and killing a person in 2001. Damn, <laughs> yeah, man. Y'all, this is, well, this is their crime. Yeah, This is their drunk. crime, though. Yeah. Yeah. You guys do this. You guys do this. Yeah, driving um, drunk yeah. and taking off. If they let him out, he's going to get us yeah. a pack of Coronas and right. crawl his way from that wheelchair right. into a car. Right. Yo, yo, let me guess. It was a pickup truck. 
All I know is is all it could have been a Camaro with um flames on the side. Yeah, I <laughs> the teddy, with, with the teddy the bear hanging from the exhaust pipe. With the dots um, on the rear, man. <laughs> yeah, man. This is this is um golly, man. Person in 2001. He questioned whether Montagudo was unable to walk or drive despite being in a wheelchair. Certainly, he is working and working in a number of other counties, and his, his arrests and citations in the past few years are Orange County, Osceola County, Broward County, as well as New Grand County. He's getting around to these counties somewhere, uh, somehow, and that would mean that he, he is driving. For Trenton's parents, it's difficult to be in the courthouse and in the same room as Montagudo, especially as their first Christmas without him approaches. They say every time they show up to a court hearing, they're honoring their son's memory. Just leaving the world in a better place than we found it. Doing everything. Damn, you gliders, man. Y'all be taking it on the fucking chin, man. Fuck. In the ass, <laughs> we can't. Right. No matter how difficult right. it is to sit through Get things like this, chill, chill. keeping a focus on scholarships um, and giving back to the community because that's what exactly what he. And look, well, listen to what the guys say. Listen to what they say. Listen, he this is this is God. He shall keep a room. He shall keep a room. Doing everything that we can, no matter how difficult it is to sit through things like we did today, keeping a focus on scholarships um, and giving back to the community because that's what exactly what he would be doing. The Trenton Stewart Foundation has a goal of advocating for a law in his memory that would require an automatic increase in sentencing guidelines for repeat offenders of vehicular homicide and or DUI manslaughter. The next hearing for Montagudo is scheduled for January 22nd. Reporting live, Ariel Schiller, Channel 4, The Local Station.